Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a wonderful, pretty picture. It's almost springtime. I love it. It's in the air. Hey, here you go. Write this in your notes. We're still continuing section one of chapter 10, and the essential question you need to write in your notes is how do you write an equation? Oh, yeah, algebra. For a perpendicular bisector, uh oh, shrieking, I can hear it. Geometry, I love it. Of a segment, oh boy, still geometry, on the coordinate plane. Cool, back to algebra. <laughs> but here's the deal you need to make sure, of course, you write that in your notes, but you also need to make sure you write this example. Because this example, ladies and gentlemen, is the example we're going to master, dominate, annihilate. I feel like I'm rapping. Um, we're going to be very very good at doing these types of questions so write an equation for the perpendicular bisector of the line segment joining two specific points a is negative one four and b is five comma two so write that down if you haven't already pause the video that's an extremely important example well the one we're going to do in this video lesson that you'll be able to master so let's do this though. Let's dissect it a little bit more so you understand what's up. So bye bye, flower. So what's it mean? We'll write an equation. You know what that means. Well, if you don't, here you go. You well, I'm pausing. Write this for sure, guys, in your notes. Because here's what this whole video lesson's on. We're writing the equation, which means we're going back to our handy dandy, you got it. Y equals M ooh, that looks familiar. X plus B our handy dandy slope intercept form and remember when we did this in class with the mission impossible theme we only had one mission it was to solve the equation and to find these two things find the slope and to find the y-intercept how do we do it completely dependent remember on what was given to us but that was the overall goal to write my final answer like that and the same thing is going to apply in this video lesson in this section so let's dissect this a little more what does perpendicular mean? Well, remember from geometry, it just means we got ourselves, here's the symbol, we saw it before, it just means we got ourselves some right angles. Now, in terms of this section, though, we're talking about slopes. So remember, parallel lines, when we talked about parallel lines, that meant the slopes, can you finish the sentence, are congruent or equal sorry I'm thinking geometry they're equal so slopes are the same so if the slope of one had one third is the slope the other one had one third the slopes are the same check this out a little simple example by the way to remember parallel there's a symbol just tip it over equal parallel equal parallel equal when we're talking perpendicular remember they are and this needs to go in your notes for sure these guys are opposite reciprocals so, when we talk about opposite reciprocals, recipro, it's hard to write here sometimes with your mouse. Woo, got it. Opposite reciprocals. So, if you got one, as I said before, say we got one as one half, the opposite reciprocal to that would be negative two over one. So, you flip it and you change the sign. Now, I just write this as negative two, but that's the scoop. So, if you have one, you know, slope maybe that's say negative four, well, the opposite reciprocal of that would be 1 over positive 4. So opposite signs and flip it. That's opposite reciprocals. All important. Okay? Let's go back to this now. What does this word bisect mean? Okay, geometry people. Bisect means not my awesome biceps that I got, but it does mean two. Bi means two. Bicycle means two wheels. So bisect means two parts. But bisect means more than just two parts. Remember, it means two congruent two equal parts. So we're talking about writing the equation <laughs> of a perpendicular bisector of a line segment that goes through these two points right there. Now, if you hear what I just said, bisect means two parts, but not only two parts, two equal parts. And my friends, what does that bring up in your mind? Oh yeah, the word midpoint. And into your notes, if you don't remember, it doesn't matter if you do or don't, you need to write it down. I don't even care if you think, I got it. This right here, you pause the video, copy down exactly what's on here, and write it down word for word, letter for letter, number for number, picture for picture. Because over here, as you see, it gives you a very generic point A and a very generic point B. They can be anything they want to be, but the midpoint, the bisection point, uh -huh, is the point right between them. How do you find it? You take the two x's, add them together, divide by 2. Take the two y's, add them together, and divide by 2. 
and that gives you an ordered pair with a comma in between for the x coordinate and the y coordinate of the midpoint. Awesome. Now let's do the actual example we just had. That's okay, here's the equation or the, the question. Let's find the midpoint of these two points right here. And by the way, you need to make sure you write this down because we're going to use it in a little bit. So how do I find the midpoint between negative 1, 4 and 5, 2? Well, let's just use the midpoint formula. So here it is. Midpoint formula that's right above. So I just take the negative 1, which I'm going to say is my x1. I'll take the 5, make that the x2. And I'll take, let me change. And I'll take the 4 and make that the y1. And I'll make the 2 the y2. So all I have to do, guys, is just simply average these. And when I average these, here's what you got. Negative 1 plus 5. It's the x coordinates, negative 1 and 5. Add them together. That gives you a 4. Divide that by a 2. That would give you a 2. So that's your x coordinate for the midpoint. And then I take the y's, the 4 and the 2, those guys. Add them together. Divide by 2. That would give me a 3. Ooh, so there you go. So your answer if it was asking for midpoint, is 2, 3. Now, you need that because when we're talking about, again, writing the equation for the perpendicular bisector of a line segment, you definitely need that, okay? So let's move forward. Now, let me get to the next thing. So here's the picture. Um, on your, your graph paper that I gave you in class that you took in class, or if you just have it. So write this example in terms of this regard. If we got this so far. Now, we got negative 1, 4. I put that on here, so negative 1, 4. And 5, 2 is right there. So at 5, 2, there's the segment. That blue segment right there is between those two points. And this line right there is the perpendicular bisector. Now, this point we already found. That point is 2, 3. So at this point right here, right there, that point is 2, comma 3. So that's the midpoint. So I just drew this line right through here. But as you can see, what I'm looking for, guys, is this. I'm looking for the equation of this particular line. So I need slope and I need y-intercept. I haven't even found either of those two yet, but I have found the midpoint, which is going to be extremely useful. So, well, if you look at this, I mean, this is a very simple question. If you already have a graph like this, because here's all you got to do. If you really look at it, I can pretty easily... By doing this, well, oh, well, actually, let's do this. Let's find the y-intercept first. The y-intercept is right here. I mean, the y-intercept is pretty simple to see. It, this whole line that I'm trying to find the equation for, this line right there, the red line. No pun intended, the red line. Ah. Um, the, the slope or the, uh, the y-intercept is negative 3. That's pretty simple. So negative 3 would be your y-intercept. So I'm looking now for my slope to fill it in. I just need to find the slope. Well, you can look at that pretty simple and go, okay, slope is rise over 1, so I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, over 1. So this is 3 right there. I'm going over 1. Is it, is it consistent? Up 1, 2, 3, over 1. So it looks like my slope is 3 over 1, and it is. So the slope would be that. By the way, you're done. That would be the equation of the line. However, I'm going to tell you they're not nearly that simple because you don't always graph them properly even though I do because I'm a genius, but we all don't graph them all perfectly every time. So we still need to know how to do it, forgetting the fact that we can just count it. So let me show you how to do that. So I erase this stuff, and let's go. Okay, so what you have to do is this. we got to find, again, back to what I just said. we got to find the y-intercept, and we got to find the slope. And let's say we don't have a graph. Let's say we don't have a grid. Let's say we didn't even graph it. We can still do it. How? I have to find the slope, guys of this red line. Well, wait, last I checked, you need two points to find the slope. And all we have right now is just our little midpoint that we found right here. We don't have any other point on there. I agree completely with you. Now, you could pick maybe this point if you wanted to, if it was graphed, or maybe this point down there. But let's do it this way. As we just talked about with perpendicular slopes, here's what we do know, guys. We do know there's a point, negative 1, 4, and there's a point. So we can find the slope of the blue line, and then, huh, here's a concept. Once we find the slope of the blue line, let's just take the opposite reciprocal to find this segment here or line here that's perpendicular haha, to the blue line. And that will give you the slope of the red line. You might need to replay that because that was a lot I just said right there. 
and it was really good. So go back and replay that so you understand what I'm talking about. So let's do this. Let's use the slope formula to find the slope of the blue line, which will then again determine the slope of the red line. I love this. Okay? Now even though I know you know it, can you do this? You need to. I'm, I'm looking for this too. Write the equation over here for the slope formula. I shouldn't say equation. Write the formula for slope. It is right there. And you can see the work. All I did was this. You take the y2 minus y1, so here's y2, here's y1, and subtract them. That gives you negative 2 in the top. And then you take x2, which is 5, and x1, which is negative 1, and take 5 minus negative 1, which gives you 5, actually plus 1, which gives you 6. So the slope of the blue line, be careful now, the slope of the blue line is negative 1 third. Yucky. But remember, we're looking for the slope of this red line. So I must take the opposite reciprocal of negative one third. And the opposite reciprocal of negative one third happens to be positive three. So that is the slope of that line right there. Lovely. So that would what I'd be doing. I just be that would be. That's what I would be doing. What am I talking about? I would plug that slope in there. So all I need to do now guys is find this wonderful y-intercept. How do I do that, you say? Well, keep in mind what we got. We got ourselves a slope, and all we need to do is find this, so we need an x and a y. Ba-bing. I have this point right here, 2 comma 3. Boy, I chose a mustard color. That's really weird. Sorry. Doesn't matter. I like the mustard color. I like mustard. It looks like ketchup and mustard. <laughs> so I have that point right there that's on the perpendicular of the bisector. You could choose a point here if you wanted to. You could choose any point. But we already found 2, 3, the midpoint, which is why it came into play and it's important. So let's use that point and plug in this 2 for x. And let's plug in this 3 for y. And just solve for b. Lovely. That's going to give us our y. So let's do all that work as I cleared it off here. Let's do all that work over here. As I just told you, you know, well, actually, let me change colors. Okay, so we already have this. We already have this slope. We know that that's 3. And again, I'm looking for the y-intercept. So let's take our point, as I just said. We'll take that 3 and put it in there for y. We'll take this 2 and put it in here for x. So it's 3 times 2. Lovely. Plus b. So let's solve this thing now for B, guys, and we should get our answer. So we get 3 here, obviously. We get 6 here. So when I take and I subtract 6 from both sides, that gives me negative 3 is my, my computer's being weird, which is why it's writing strange, by the way. It's like lagging. Sorry. So there is my y-intercept. So there's my answer. Let's put it together. That just goes in right here, right there. And that will give me my final answer. And if you actually go back in the video and look, it's the same exact answer that we had before when we just kind of counted with this whole thing. So the answer is this. The equation, finally. I love it. And they won't, they all don't take this long. Just go back and watch this video a couple times because there's a lot in this video. You can soak it up many times and we'll master it. I love it. But you need to watch it a couple times. So my slope was 3 because, again, I found perpendicular. Change that slope over, so I knew that was the slope of the red line. Now I found my y-intercept, so I just attached that thing right there, and lovely. So that is the equation for my perpendicular bisector, the red line, of a line segment, the blue line, joining those two points. Rewatch the video, like I said, a couple times, even though I know you already got the notes. Rewatch it. Apologize about the length of it, but go watch it again a couple times. Highlight or Scroll to the places that you need to look at and reinforce what you don't know because we're going to practice these and master these. I'm going to be excited for you because these are really good questions and I'm excited to tell people you can do them no matter what. See you guys in class. You guys are amazing. Later.